And this is Joe Kelly Radio, and we're really excited because tonight we are going to welcome two great friends of ours. They are out of the Twin Cities, Minneapolis, Minnesota, and the duo, The Red Hour. It's a great, great group on manual control records. They have a release coming out. We, ha we have the music. We've been playing it here on Joe Kelly Radio, but it's the maxi single, Cracks, going to be released May 7th. And uh, we welcome the duo. Great people out of Minnesota, Brooke Calder and Jason Howes. How you doing? Hi, guys. Hello. <laughs> Joe, it's so good to hear your voice. Yeah, great, great to, oh. to talk to you both. And um, so nice to hear your voice. You've had a lot going on in your own career and also uh, personal lives going on with things out in the Twin Cities. And how, yeah. how, how are you holding up both of you? It's been wild, Joe, I have to say. Pretty draining. Yeah. And I'm just so glad that um, Chauvin was convicted, right. as you know, he should have been. And I'm just so relieved that um, um, that. How can I mean, what's the best? Way it feels good to know that there won't be a repeat of last year and that some accountability has returned. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that hopefully new laws will be made yep. so that these things don't have to keep happening. DOJ right, started right. an investigation to the Minnesota yeah. Department. Good. So yeah. It's, yeah. It's I was coming. reading some of the things they want. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So one hopes. So, so, so George Floyd, Brooke, you, you knew him through the seen him at nightclubs right as a bodyguard or um, i wouldn't say that i knew him personally but right. um he was the lead bouncer and doorman at a nightclub here called conga mm -hmm. okay. um, and my friends worked in at conga in the house band and so i did meet george twice briefly mm -hmm. right you know but he was the kind of person that you know you don't forget that smile <laughs> mm -hmm. right or his welcoming manner because I have to say, as you know, you know, I grew up in Zimbabwe and there at nightclubs, they were always very welcoming and hospitable. And I noticed in America, it was more like, let me see your ID. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, you know, it was like George was one of those people that he was old school. You knew what he was there to do, but he would welcome you and smile at you and engage you directly. And I mean, that's the person that I wouldn't say I knew, but that, you know, I ran across a couple of times and he really stayed in my memory um, because of the hospitable manner in which he treated everybody, you know, right, right. You don't forget you don't, when people treat you well, you just don't forget them. You know what I mean? You always, yeah, yeah. It stands you always out. remember because um, hospitality again is, I mean, we still see it in, in places, but I mean, old school hospitality is sort of like, you know, a hard one thing <laughs> anymore. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so Jason yeah. Hollis and, and Brooke Calder are with us. They are out of Minneapolis, Minnesota. The Red Hour, the new release called Cracks, the maxi single. Brooke, you guys always do extended uh, mixes and you got seven <laughs> yeah. here which is really yeah. cool on, on manual control records. First, yeah. let's talk about, well, we'll get into how, how the two of you met and um, then we'll talk about the record. When, when did you first meet both of you? Well, uh, I, I met Jason's work in like 2002 or three because uh, we were, we knew a lot of the same people mm -hmm. and he, he was on comps um, in, in a similar electro, you know, this would have been, telephone slash very early lolly proto lollipop so right. um we were sort of operating in similar genres in in electronica so um i was actually quite familiar with his work um during mm -hmm. that period but we didn't really know each other and i guess i'll let you and i remember seeing your you around and your stuff around and you know flyers from shows and whatnot so i was aware of you but um <clears throat> we actually met like what two three three years ago yeah it's yeah. been just over three years yeah, yeah. She put out a call on her Facebook wall for no, I guess it was three and a half years ago half? that I first yeah, posted. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, it like... took us a couple of months of chatting to sort of right. I, I uh you probably remember AOA, which was a more oh, industrial yeah. project yeah. of mine. I was sort of still in that in industrial social justice um 
call a spade a spade. It's time to be confrontational. I was in that sort of headset and mindset. Mm -hmm. So I was like, ah, I need to find like, you know, someone locally who produces this kind of stuff, you know, um, besides Jeff, Jeff was the other person locally who I was in AOA with. And, um, so I just, I, I knew I wanted to do something in that vein, but something just a bit more narrative and personal, um, Mm -hmm still confrontational, but, but, right. um, but, but yeah, I just wanted to find someone who could uh, be confrontational musically, but also knew how to sort of, um, how do you say, create a level of intimacy mm-hmm. around things. And I mean, obviously cracks is just a single, um, right. the entire EP that we're working on is, is quite, <laughs> seven radically different departures to the same track but they are technically the same track mm-hmm, but the right. EP, yeah EP right oh uh, the ap that we're working on yeah. is uh quite a bit more it's contrasty uh, yeah there's there's a lot we really unfold the narrative and then explore the whole thing quite a bit more in those, those mm-hmm. right. and uh, our listeners can go to the red hour on the band camp site uh our manual control records.net mm-hmm. manual so, records.net Okay, has like everything, everybody yeah. and everything. Manual yeah, it's really cool. Yeah. Oh yeah, manualcontrol.net, yeah, excuse yeah. me. Right, okay. <laughs> let me remember so, my own website. <laughs> that's okay, we're, we're going to let people know. So Aww. so, um, so <laughs> Jason, you, you grew up in Minnesota? Oh no, I'm from mm-hmm. Nevada, I'm from Reno. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. He's okay. an import, like uh, me. Very much so. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I'm used so, to so deserts what, you and <laughs> Yeah, my dad lives in Vegas, so. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, he does. So, so, uh, oh. Yeah. Yeah. He's been out there for seven years or so. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. Seems to like it. Yeah. I've never actually been to Vegas. I feel kind of weird about saying yeah, that. I've been about... to Reno with Jason, but Re- Reno is to Vegas as San Francisco is to LA, <laughs> both distance and culturally. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. So, mm. so Reno's on par with San Francisco, like that, right? Uh... I wouldn't directly compare them. But Different right. cities. If you're comparing the two ge- geographical regions and their cultures and whatnot. Oh, okay. They, they are similar in, in, the, in their own respective ways. Reno is right, really right. close to where Burning Man happens. So oh, yeah. there's like a huge alternative culture Oh yeah, uh, sure. in Reno yeah. as well. Like it's, right. it's like a migration every single Yeah, year. everyone it's comes through Reno to go Burning to Burning, Burning Man. Man. In fact, it radically distorted the alternative culture of Reno when that started happening yeah. because all of these people from all over the planet would come and it's so you know, interesting leave their cultural residue all over yeah <laughs> well and it just it, it's interesting because it, i think that happening in so many different people coming through reno it mm-hmm. just i think uh made it so multicultural and um it wasn't impressive. so many different influences <laughs> you know mm-hmm. coming in musically artistically vis- you know visually visual mm-hmm. art fashion all these things for sure <clears throat> and, oh, yeah. and minneapolis of course great great city um Love it. artistic as well right yes uh, yeah. minneapolis always has been and and you know i was so proud to live here and and to um you know be here as long as i've been here it's basically you know besides my my birthplaces and and where we lived in zimbabwe i've always considered it like my second home and i have to say you know over the last year it's it's just been like <laughs> uh i'm still very proud of minneapolis especially after that ruling yesterday and the jury but um i i just hope that we see a more how can i say a more just city. kind of gentler city <laughs> yeah 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 and police force for right, sure right sorry i got a bit off topic sorry <laughs> <laughs> no no that's okay mm-hmm. this this is free form radio so yeah <laughs> now now the two of you um got a great studio at the home studio right yes we got really yeah, lucky we, yeah <laughs> we right now video. oh okay so yeah we're you, talking you to you see- in the control room <laughs> Oh, cool. Yeah. yeah. And, it's, and it's nice. You, you've posted videos of, you know, making the project and mm-hmm. mixing it and stuff like that. How, how is it working together as love interest and working together uh, career-wise? <laughs> making it happen. The good and the bad. 
it, it, I think it's it, well, it's both, right? Mm -hmm. It's 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 definitely a more complex relationship, but it's also a closer relationship. Yeah, well, mm -hmm. and like I think versus working with just an a producer that you're in a studio with it's like oh now now you can argue about creative things because you actually are partners with the person so you know now now you can just like stand your ground and sneer <laughs> at them from across the room occasionally <laughs> and you know get into it so right right i mean I, to the energy yeah it's it's a different vibe than walking into a studio it, just with someone who's strictly a producer i feel like in some ways you can get more comfortable Mm -hmm. and, and you can wind up with a much better, more intimate product um, working with someone that you also love who really understands you, you know, and, and I kind of, um, for myself, you know, I can sit here and record my own vocals and do whatever, but right. it, it's not the same, you know, when you're sitting with someone you love who supports you and who you support and vice versa, it's, I, I just feel like it, it takes on its own thing, its own chemistry. And you're not going to have that chemistry with some, you know, with a, a random producer that you'd barely know. Mm -hmm. I mean, there will still be chemistry as long as you have a, a good solid performance there, but you know, it's not the same thing. It's just not. Definitely. So you don't, yeah. You don't send uh, Jason out of the room when you do your vocals, like Prince used to do with the engineers. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> I still prefer to record home. my own vocals, but. Right. Right. Um, Mainly, I edit, I kind of mostly with his help, uh, my system crashed. Like I had my own corner in the studio and my hard drive took a, took a, a leap <laughs> after a decade of faithful service. So I've been having to relearn Ableton and some different editing things. So he's been having to sort of like help me sit here. But I used to just record my, you know, record and edit my vocals myself. But oh, okay. yeah. But it's, I mean, we recorded all these vocals together, didn't we? Yep, every single yeah. one. Yeah. But the demo, though, like I, when we first met, uh, I sent her some songs and she sent back, actually this one, um, she sent back cracks with, I didn't even know that that kind of gold could just occur with you know, right. sending someone a demo and they send you back a track and it's obviously needed sharpening and, and, yeah. and finishing. But it was rough. But... You knew, we, we knew in that moment that it was a thing that we had to complete. So. Right, right. Yeah. Well, like, and I just, he sent me all this music and I was like, what the heck? How have we not <laughs> made music together before? It was unexpectedly compatible. Yeah. Right. I just thought like, I mean, I had heard some of his other stuff, you know, as I mentioned, but it's Which like, sounds nothing where, did, like this. where did you get all these? <laughs> where did these right, come right. from? <laughs> you know? So, so uh, the Cracks Maxi single uh, official release still May 7th? Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes. The video might be a little bit behind because of course, okay. obviously we wanted to watch the trial. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, especially while we were waiting for a verdict and then with the verdict being announced, we're, we're probably two weeks behind in production right now. So right. the video might be more like June, but, but it's coming. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, Hey, you know, we, we know you're going to have something great too, as well, as well as the, uh, EP of the, of the single, the maxi single cracks. Let me ask you about the lyrics. You got to put the kids to bed on, on some of those. Yeah, on I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. Uh, no, no. It's, it's, it's a play on words. NC-17, I'd say. Yeah, right. It's a play on yeah. words, so I, I'm just messing with you about that. <laughs> no. <laughs> the, the lyrics, it, it's, it's really cool. Who, who writes the lyrics? Do you, Brooke, or Jason? Um, I mostly write, like, most of the lyrics. Often, okay. you know, I'll sit with Jason and say, "What? how can I make this better? What 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 word would it be better than this other word? <laughs> but it's right, a right. word or a phrase. Not, yeah, it's this is definitely a her narrative. Yeah, well, I mean, it's again when you're when you're a partner with somebody, uh, you know, it's that's part of the greatness is that they're right, there right. and and you have someone other than yourself to bounce things off of, you know. Right. And so that's just teamwork teamwork you, you've got uh seven mixes of the of the track cracks um <laughs> who, are, who are some of the collaborators on, on these particular cuts um so someone who maybe not very many people are familiar with i'm gonna start with um the first remixer because i met him when i was 14 years old and he was 
for a, excuse me, I was 15 for a summer. He was my very best friend when I was a teenager and he was responsible for a lot of my musical influences. He used to make me mixtapes that were so cool and introduced me to all kinds of bands and, and film soundtracks. Um, so one of the re first remixer I'll talk about is Bad Rich and his mm -hmm. name is actually Jason Goodrich. So Bad Rich is a bit of an inside joke on Play the name. on names. Yeah. Right, right. Um, so, and he just makes really glitchy, experimental, ambient, really interesting uh, sound collage types of pieces and remixes and so forth. And and he's brilliant. He's He does a lot of mastering for other bands and mm -hmm. other acts. And um, so, yeah, it, it just... You know, in life, when people are good to you, you go back and get them. Right, right. You know, you go back and get whoever, whoever is responsible for making you the person that you are, especially musically, you always go back and get them. So I had to go back and get him, man. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> and he's, he's become such a prolific and interesting um, sound artist himself. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, back in those days, we were just teenagers hanging out, listening to music. Um, and I'm just so proud of how he's developed um, and, and that he chose to also make music that is really not like socially acceptable by pop standards. You know, I mean, you have to be kind of brave to get outside that box. You know, it took me a long time personally to start thinking outside of that box, but. Um, he's definitely outside that box. Yeah. And, oh, right. <laughs> and he's responsible probably for influencing me at a young age to begin to think outside the box musically. So love, love his weird, cool, glitchy mix. Mm -hmm. um, and then let's see, uh, Jean-Marc Letterman. Je yeah. Like I love Jean-Marc's stuff. Um, he, I sh I'm pretty sure You've probably heard some stuff he's done at some point. He was in Jane Loves Jezebel. Fad Gadget. Fad oh, Gadget. Okay. Yeah. And <clears throat> briefly uh, for a bit in Front 242. And of course, he started the group The Weathermen in Belgium. Mm -hmm. um, and Jean-Marc is a bit of a prankster. So we, we sent him all of the stems. And we were expecting okay. to get back like some really like industrial EBM. Yeah, something dark wave. Maybe. Yeah. Really dark wave totally not that yeah but okay. <laughs> and he sent uh i think you've probably heard it it's it's the last mix on there a mm -hmm. very like neo-futuristic jazz for, <laughs> right right for mix. yeah like i mean you can hear the hip swinging in this track it's just right yeah right. and it was so that just was a, a nice surprise right yeah mm -hmm. it was so interesting yeah. that yeah, he did awesome. that and mm -hmm. have you ever seen deep space nine joe no i don't think so Okay, so on Deep Space Nine, there is a singer who's a hologram called Vic Fontaine, mm -hmm. okay. and he, he he's a lot he's a very Frank Sinatra y, mm -hmm. okay. um, but he's a hologram and he has his own house band. And when we got back this mix, Jason and I were joking that it sounds like I'm a guest at Vic Fontaine's oh, gig on DS Nine. It's perfect, oh. <laughs> like, but like leading a less <laughs> group because there's just so right, much right. Sweet. And bombast in it too. It's it's that old school awesomeness, but it's right, just, right. Oh, yeah. it's so big. Yep. So cool. And I just, you know, I love it when I when I'm surprised by mm -hmm. what someone sends. Um and, and you give them carp launch just to, to oh, work yeah. on it. Right? Oh yeah. 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 I mean, like if I feel like, hey, you know, do you want me to do additional vocals for your version? Or if I if I feel like something's missing or something like I might volunteer to do extra vocals or send them some extra stems or something if they that didn't happen at all. <laughs> yeah. That didn't, it didn't need to happen with any of these remixers whatsoever. It's just like, Oh, yeah. so, so I, I got a question about stems. What, what's the meaning of stems? Oh, okay. So like uh, if you make the vocals a cappella, Okay. And you break them out into the different like backing lead vocals, uh, lead support, and then backing vocals, whispers. So all of those would be considered vocal stems. Um, 
you know, and when you hand them to a remixer, they they might use whole phrases um, or they might leave your 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 lyrics intact or your delivery intact, or they might just sample it, you know, um, and cut it up into little pieces and and do whatever. So technically, when you send vocals, those are stems. Musically, I'll let you explain what stems are. For Basically, music. you export all of the tracks and then you cut them down to the essential parts so that it's not a gigantic file. And then you send those. Oh, all okay. Out. Mm -hmm. okay. And then they kind of, they take maybe like the baseline, like usually by default, we send all the vocals mm -hmm. and then a baseline, mm -hmm. um, whatever the lead featured instrument is, we usually mm -hmm. okay. send that and the percussion um, and usually like some pads, like sample, like pads or anything essential to yeah. create the, uh, the melodic and harmonic and yeah. content. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. So, so our sometimes listeners, it's some, as, yeah. sometimes it's just as simple as zero to end renderings of each track, and then you chuck that into a zip file, and off it goes. So mm -hmm. can, yeah. let them do the cutting. Mm -hmm. right. and, and that's a, a lot like what we did with. I guess I learned this when I was working with Monty when we were working with John Matthews over in England. Right. Like we just sent everything over to him. Like we cut all the vocals and and um, keyboards and stuff here, and then we sent them over to John. And then John did his bit, you know, and, and re reimagined the the demo type things we sent him. And then, you know, we cut extra stuff. And that it's basically just, I guess, how I've been working for most of my career. <laughs> well, it's working the Red Hour, the cracks, outstanding uh release. And for our listeners on Joe Kelly Radio, where where can people get the the maxi single? And is it available now or you gotta wait till the seventh? You can pre-order it. Mm -hmm. Okay. There's mm -hmm. one rotating version that we have as the one that you can mm -hmm. we feature get when oh you yeah get the transporter yeah, remix right at yes yeah. at the moment um and and then we we're featuring a different remixer pretty much every like four days mm -hmm. just so everybody okay. gets a bit of a spotlight <clears throat> and then um, on May seventh is it mm -hmm. that that's when the the pre sale the goes live the, the, yeah you'll be able to get. Program. Yeah, so you get one track in advance, whatever the featured track is now, and then you get the full release mm -hmm. on May 7th. Wow, so and, and great, so great like artwork. You, on it. Where we've given you the entire thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. See, I'm privileged. Thanks. I really think, no, thank <laughs> well, you. Thanks we're to privileged to be we're privileged no. to be speaking with you. No, <laughs> like, likewise, you know, we're, we're great friends. And uh I, yes, I see are. you've got some shows coming up in, in all oh. Austin. <laughs> what's what's that about? That's actually not true. Yeah, that's <laughs> there's, okay. there's a band it's called Just in. Red Hour. Like that oh, okay. That what what is that app called? Uh, Song Kick is yeah. Integrated Song with, Kick oh, is okay, integrated yeah. Bandcamp. with Bandcamp by default, yeah. and for some oh, reason, oh. <laughs> because we didn't have a song file or whatever it was set up, it automatically thought we were red hour instead of the red hour yeah they're inadequately granular in their sorting and therefore they stick the the the, the show listings on on both profiles yeah, yeah. It, it's really yeah. odd and everyone's like why are you going to austin in a climate like this and i'm like what are you talking about at first i was like what are you why what we're not going to austin i wish but no um and then right. they're like well it's on your page and i was like wait a second and i went and i was like whoa <laughs> why are we listed as being in austin right. and i was like jason did you book us a gig uh, yeah. he's like no what are you talking about and I mean, but it looks good still so. well we have it yeah. we have a ticket in with song kick to get it fixed yeah yeah oh, okay, okay we immediately yeah. like we're like hey guys we're right being really how, how about, yeah how about the name uh red hour where, where is that originally from oh Ha! Huh. <laughs> okay, we're super nerdy. Uh, Star Trek. Yep. Was the episode <laughs> called the Archon? Yep. In oh, okay. The original Star Trek. Mm -hmm. I can't remember if it's the first or second year, but um, yeah, it's a. Uh, it's the first episode that the Prime Directive. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Again, we're being extra nerdy. I'm sorry. No, that's all right. But um, it it's the episode in which the Prime Directive is first mentioned in the Star mm -hmm. Trek universe um oh, okay. and so they they go to this planet this is like you know original series uh kirk spock bones all of them wind up on this planet and every day there is a red hour in which people do crazy stuff they do uh 
they get drunk, they do drugs, they beat each other up, you know, they do all kinds yeah. of crazy, yeah, all kinds not of not nice things. things. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. And it we have kind of been feeling um for a while during I don't want to get too political here, but I mean AOA, you kind of know where I stand. Right. But oh, yeah. during the Trump administration, there was just so much going on that to me it felt like a red hour every single day. Right. Yeah. Every right. day felt like a whole red hour in one day. And I just thought, you know, this has nerdy, it's nerdy and fun, this title, but also it represents the way that we've been feeling. And, you know, we, we actually went through like four different band names before we settled on that. I think it's cool. Yeah. It's got that story story behind and people, I'm sure there's, there's a lot of Star Trek fans out there. So yeah they'll know yeah they'll know they'll they'll know it you know yeah but i mean the the red hour political yeah go ahead is not is the music is like not star (laughs) trekky almost at all except for jean marc's you know remix there (laughs) right right and even that's kind of yeah yeah but um but yeah so i mean it it's a very different sound than maybe what fans of star trek might be expecting but <clears throat> yeah that's where we where we took the name from mm-hmm. so, that's our hey, synth pop. and that's mommy that's my yes. mom aka synth pop. she has a persona also a musical persona <laughs> <laughs> she's called synth pup like synth pop oh, yeah. yeah synth pop <laughs> and it's a boy or girl he's a girl, she all girl. Okay. Mm-hmm. right and um she's 15 right yes mm-hmm. yeah so, so uh, living living in the city, uh, walking the dog outside in the city, you got places to go, a lot of places. Uh, yes, we, are, we. I mean, a lot of people on our block also have dogs or in the surrounding okay. area. So you'll see, like, when everybody gets home from work, like <laughs> you'll meet all kinds of puppies and dogs in the area, and it's very cute. Yeah, same same here. We go to dog parks. And <gasps> yes. Our next door neighbor's got a big yard. Yeah. Yeah, the dog parks are cool. Doggy daycare. Oh, <laughs> what's your dog's name, Joe? Uh, Ginger. Oh, yeah. named after? Yeah. Did you name her? After uh, you know, I, you know, I, not particular. I think we were just rolling through names, and that mm-hmm. wasn't her name when we adopted her. Yeah, we we rescued her, and she was we, her was Abrina, and we we changed it somehow. I, oh. I have to ask G; she'll know the story. That's cute. <laughs> yeah. You know the name but, when it sticks. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, you know, not nice dogs. Yeah. <laughs> so I always ask the musicians, especially during, you know, the, the COVID pandemic era, because the music world, you know, hits so hard. I mean, mm-hmm. as far yeah. as income, spirit and everything. Mm-hmm. How, how, what is your take? You know, do you see Glimmer of Light happening as far as... Uh, things getting back and people making a living and, you know, being excited. How do you, what do you think it's going to take? I think that, you know, with everyone being, getting vaccinated and uh, social distancing still being intact for Mm -hmm. some months to come, I think we'll see it creep back slowly, slowly. And I think, I hope that by 2022 things will be quote back to normal. I don't know, you know, what the future holds. But, you know, one other thing I wanted to just bring up is when everything went offline in the real world, everything started happening online. Mm -hmm. So have you been to Twitch yet, Joe? Um, No, I haven't. I got to go there, right? Yeah. Okay. So (laughs) for anyone who hasn't uh, visited Twitch or doesn't know what it is, Twitch started as a gaming platform. Twitch.tv. Yeah, Twitch.tv. It started off as a gaming platform. But uh, like a couple months into the pandemic, when we realized, when everyone started realizing that clubs aren't going to be open anytime soon, a lot of nightclubs and or DJs that had club nights started a Twitch channel, basically like so their own TV channel and they would um, DJ, VJ, play shows, bands started having their own Twitches. Of course, Manual Control has a Twitch. Um, And you know, a whole different world opened up. Mm -hmm. I mean, not, not everybody is aware of the fact that 
there's a whole world online around music, but a lot of music and entertainer entertainment and DJs and performers went on just like basically started living on Twitch for sure, you know, and playing shows and, you know, so I feel like yeah, I'm on the, uh, I'm on the site as we speak. I, I'm mm-hmm. checking it out. Yeah. One, yeah. One guy's doing a Prince tribute concert. That's pretty. Oh cool. yeah. I'm sure there's, Oh yeah. There's gotta be like a lot of them. <laughs> and if right, you click right. into one of those and look at the numbers of people, I mean, it'll be like, Okay, maybe there's five people on this one and a hundred two hundred on this one. Cool. Yeah. Right. And some of them they're like thousands, tens, tens of thousands, thousands of people yeah. watching this thing. So if you have good promotion and good content, you can have people from all over the planet. Yes. You know, right. watching your show, watching your mix, whatever it is, and contributing, giving you money. I mean, yep. you can put links up, you can ha- you know, have your Venmo up, your PayPal, whatever. Mm-hmm. So you can actually make really good money, good money if you you're smart and tech right. savvy and you understand yeah, how have to an use accessible it. product <laughs> yeah 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 exactly yeah and you gotta, you know, you gotta have very it. well right yeah we're, we're on mix club they have something similar like mm-hmm. this and i know that in the uk that's huge over there with mix club mm-hmm. this looks cool as well yeah this mm-hmm. is nice thanks to hit me to it yeah there's yeah i mean for anyone listening you know we are going to be not in lockdown per se as it was, but we're still going to be doing reduced things. And if you are a person who wants to go out, but is immunocompromised or legitimately at risk, you know, even for picking it up with the slightest contact, if you're concerned about that, man, just come on to Twitch, Mm -hmm. you know, and, and look around and see what there is. And if, if you need a point to stuff in your genre, like Jason and I are both, we're both on Facebook uh, we're on Twitch too under Twitch TV manual underscore control underscore records. It just flows off the tongue, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Long to remember, but yeah. Um, but yeah, like just find us, you know, on there. And even if what we do isn't a person's thing, we can still point you in the direction of how to get to, yeah. you know, what's happening for what you're interested in. Uh, we're all here together and we're all trying to get through this pandemic together. So you know, yeah, I'm, I'm looking at it right now. And uh, a DJ who I, I, w- I was down in Greenwich Village in NYU back in 82. And I was in a yeah. record store. Jelly Bean Benitez was shopping at the same record store. Yes, I remember he, him. He's he's actually uh, DJing right now. Ah, nice. We're going to have to get on Twitch later. Probably one of the but, uh, but we know the real Jelly Bean is, is uh, Gary Johnson <laughs> up in the Twin Cities. <laughs> Hey, there could be two yeah. Jelly Bean Johnsons, just not in the room yeah. at the same time. Unless yeah, they're doing yeah. a thing together, then that would yeah, be Yeah, that's cool. right. Yeah, he's got music. Make that happen. Yeah, really. Jelly Bean yeah. versus <laughs> Jelly Bean. That would be a thing. Yeah. Man. Yeah, so, hey, it's been great talking with both of you. This, this, this oh, is outstanding. And, um, we'll have it on all the outlets and Yay. All, the, all the streaming platforms as well. Oh, thank you. It's It's so nice. Um, you know, you and I have known each other now for a long time. I mean, I guess it's not that long, <laughs> not our whole lives, but, right, but I've right. known you for most of my, most of my adult career. And right, right. I just really, like I said, it's such a relief to hear your voice. And, um, I feel so relieved to have another record out finally. Too. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're all know? happy and we all, we all have a lot to give, you know, many more years, right? Mm-hmm. You, yes, you nice. and she, <laughs> yes, right? yes. So, so let's um, the red hour, the uh, cracked maxi single officially available May 7th. People, let's g- give the point where people can go. We'll have the links up, but you know, people listen, where can they go? Yeah, uh, manualcontrol.net. Okay. And that'll take you right to the band camp. Mm-hmm. It'll take you to the band camp. And Red Hour is going to be the featured artist on, on manual control for the next like six weeks, seven weeks. Mm-hmm. Along with a bunch so, of our other projects underneath it. Mm-hmm. There's other projects yeah. underneath. But manual um, manual control will keep the Red Hour up there for the whole month of May. For sure. <clears throat> okay. So Jason Hollis, Brooke Calder, thanks so much. We love you both. And uh, we, we can't wait for that full EP. Well, Thank you so much. We love and appreciate you too. And we're just so glad that we're all still here. You know, yeah. with, with thank you so much. Hope, right? Yeah. And love to the Twin Cities. You, you know, you guys and America needs a break. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Up. 
All right, more music right here from uh, Jason Hollis and Brooke Calder on Joe Kelly Radio. Thanks.